Next, we got the stars of the new BET series, Twenties. Everyone, welcome to Channel Q. Hello. Yes. Hey, thanks for having us. Are you kidding me? Okay, so like I was telling y'all when we were getting in here, Shar and I have a very personal connection to this series. So BET basically asked us outside of Channel Q, mm -hmm. all right, can y'all watch this show? Because it's very queer focused. It's very black. Yes. And they were like, could y'all give, like, sit on the kickback couch and chill with us and just watch and the entire show? And eat some show. veggie straws. <laughs> And yes, sip some sparkling strong. water. Yes, we, were, we were like, just because I'm a little thick, don't mean I don't like to eat healthy. <laughs> yeah. Potato chips. In fairness, we have That's potato true. chips for That's the true. first four episodes. And then I said, well, where's the greenery? They brought me seaweed chips. <laughs> okay. And then the next day, we had veggie straws. Amen. <laughs> and great lunches, too. BT really took care of they us. Really yes. did. I mean, oh, my goodness. I, the way I like, stacked, like, stocked up off of that, uh, what's the little area? The where crafty where I was. Crafty. Yes. You shovel next all the good week. stuff in your purse. Wow, I could get used to this every single yeah. day. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, I think the show is so amazing. I just want to know, are y'all ready for this like to take off and everyone now joining you on the journeys that your characters are and, mm -hmm. and just the show is taking? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I feel like we, we did the pilot at the end of 2018 oh, and wow. then we did the rest of the episodes in the summer of 2019 and it feels like, okay, okay, mm -hmm. is anybody going to see it? Yeah. Um, so we're excited because I, I think I can speak for myself. You know you do jobs that you're like, this is gonna pay me fine, yeah, and like yeah. or like this is gonna maybe move me to another level or whatever. But this yeah. job is something I really like loved, and like actually, mm -hmm. I'm really proud of it in a way that I don't think I've been proud of stuff I've done in the past. Yeah. Um, I mean I've been proud of other things for other reasons, but this I'm proud because I think it's really good. I I just I like the. I like the themes. I like the message. I like the writing. I think it's witty. I think it's good. I just want people to see it. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how something like continuity works because we've seen a lot of times, and I'm sure you've been in situations oh, like this, sure. Ryan, where you do like a pilot of something yeah. and it never, it you never know, comes. gets picked up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how yeah, did continuity yeah. work? Did they tell you, you know, you you got you can't change your hairstyle. You got to keep that same manicure or like what? How does First that all, work? Let me tell y'all about Gra Gabrielle's look because this is an audible yeah, program. Doing... <laughs> <laughs> she done came up in here and slayed. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah, I, said, Nia. I literally walked into the, the, uh, the lobby. Me personally. Oh, yeah, I walked into the life. lobby and was like, excuse me, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this how does that work moment. with continuity? You just um, picked up where you left off. What if you had gained a few a few pounds or lost a I few? Did. You know, it's funny you say that because when we did the pilot, I definitely was in my broke season and no. I was my broke weight, you know. And um, after, after we did the pilot, I mean, we only got paid once, but I went through a crab leg uh, yes. craving yes. type. So I was eating quite, I was in a treat yourself mode. <laughs> you know? was like, very much so in a treat yourself type of lifestyle after the pilot. And I wouldn't say it's significantly different. You know, I'm sure that only we can, yeah. you know, distinguish yeah. the difference. But yeah, we had, I mean, I was fine with keeping my hair cut. But of course, now I've grown it out. So for season two, I've considered like, you know, what are they going to do? Da, yeah. da, da. But I don't mind either way. I miss, You don't mind getting a fade again? No, nah, you know, two. the fade was, it was mad convenient. I really just grew my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, relatable content. You know, um, <laughs> the fade was mad convenient, and I, I miss it. Um, so, you know, whatever they ask me to do, I'm down, you know. We got to but that's there. quite interesting, though, because I feel like this show is going to be, in my opinion, so huge. After watching it, I knew it was just magic. Yes, prophecy. Um, <laughs> and I believe in <laughs> manifestation and yeah. stuff. But coming from, you know, a moment where this is like your first job, JoJo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know you all are just amazing actresses, but... How does how does that kind of dwell in the uh, the idea of imposter syndrome, where you're literally your life is about to change? That's a really great question. Um, thankfully, you know, I was doing stand up comedy before yeah. and doing improv and stuff like that. Um, and honestly, I've been I haven't felt like that. I felt mm -hmm. very. Uh, like I'm supposed to be in this space, you know, even before getting booked for this, um, my best friend, she's like the Marie in my life. Um, mm -hmm. She's a development exec. And so she would get me into parties with, you know, the who's who of Hollywood. Right, and right. so I've kind of gotten mm -hmm. already like accustomed to seeing people and being in those spaces. <laughs> um, and to be honest, it was like, I remember when I first moved to L.A., somebody told me it was probably going to take about 10 years to oh. to do anything. And mm -hmm. I was like, maybe that's you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not going to be years. my story. Yeah, a they decade. literally Well, because they knew <laughs> me as a comedian. Focus. Yeah, they were like, you're a stand-up com stand comedy, takes a while, da 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 yeah, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, well, that's your story. I don't mm -hmm. know about for, yeah. for me. So yeah. now that I finally interceded into the industry and, and to this capacity, oh, my God, like I could have never imagined it being the first thing I do, you know, would be to 
to this degree. However, I am ready. I am. Yeah. I am feeling comfortable. I don't get nervous. You know. I don't know. I mean, it's just a blessing. It's you were just born like, for this. You know, is what yeah. It seems I mean, like. I. Am yeah. and I was okay, okay. Now, where's my bell? <laughs> now I have to ask because this show, uh, like we mentioned at the top of the show, Ryan and I have seen every episode, and I think that it's safe to say because the the trailer kind of gives away some of the acting heavyweights that are yeah, affiliated yeah, yeah. with this show. I have to ask, what was it like? Because of course, Kim Whitley had me in stitches. Oh, every scene me? that she was at in. The table. At, at the table. Don't, don't get away. away. But just, that's just now. There's a at table. The table. There's a table. <laughs> Read it. Like, I, I want to ask him, like, was that improv? Like, I feel like half of her lines were improv. But what was it like working with heavyweights like um, Jennifer Lewis and Rick Fox and Vanessa Williams and Kim Whitley and Sean Anderson? Mm. I noticed in the credits, he's not Big Sean. It's Sean, Sean Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. How, what yeah, was that yeah. like working with them? <laughs> Well, his his character is. We're gonna, we're gonna let you all watch as the episode pans out. But his character, mm, mm, mm. right? right. We'll go, he's not a man still. Big Sean is, but I think I forgot his character's name. Tristan or something. Mm-hmm. What was his yeah, name? Yeah, it was Tristan. Yeah. Tristan got on my nerves. But we'll get to that. What was it like working with these people? Um, for me. I work with Kim, um, Kim Whitley on the pilot. So walking into that first scene, um, it was refreshing to see her there because she's so down to earth. She's so mm, chill. Yeah. And she made me feel comfortable. You know, like when yeah. I saw her on set doing her thing, um, you know, you stick to the script. You know, you make sure you give them what they want, that take. But Kim also was very much so doing her thing and improv And I was like, man. It just seems so much more natural, so much better when they let her do her thing. And so I would take a JoJo take, you know, every once yeah. in a while, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to do what y'all said on this paper, but also I'm going to do, do what I want. Yeah, and I, you know, after watching them edit, I saw where they kept a lot of the stuff that her and I both, you yeah. know, went off script and did. So it, 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 it was, she may not have realized that she was teaching me, but I was definitely paying attention to what she was doing because she's a comedic actress, right. a- actress as well. And I was like, you know, as a comedian, you can add your own flavor to what's already on the paper and the sauce, you know, to it. And so, you know, she just kind of was like, she gave me so many tips. She was just very um, warm, you know, yeah. and just just incredible and definitely created a standard for me for how I would want to treat people in the future. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. I meet new new artists who are doing their thing or even, even once we get to season two, people who are guest starring on the show, you know, like... It's oh, just have like, you all already started filming season two? We just gonna speak no, that into life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Already right now, yeah. season yeah. two is yeah. coming. Y'all still, y'all have a you very know. season two. I feel like you all. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Ryan, yes. don't you feel like they like owe that. us a season two oh, based I, on that cliffhanger from oh, season one? Yeah. Not yeah. to jump ahead, I just but I was gooped. But no, you also predicted it. I did. I did. You? Yeah. From my episode, but episode where you like? I think towards in the mid. Well, actually, no. The top. I was about to say that was like episode two, and I was like, Ryan, you're being ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> did her job too. Sophina plays Ida B. She yeah. must have just acted her ass off then, because yeah. you know you yeah, could just pick did. up little things. Very yeah. Miranda Priestly. Yeah. But what about what about your experiences as well? Yeah. Oh, I mean, working with these people, and and some of them are on the show. Some of these heavy weights we're talking about are on the show for a second, or some of them are on for the whole season. And it was so cool because it made me realize, oh, if you guys want to do this, that means you believe in this work yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's um, a good take. But yeah, like I was yeah. like, oh, hey now, if you're taking so the time humanity. out of your life, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, Vanessa Williams, I just watched, she shot in the final episode and she has just like a quiet grace. She was gracious to everyone. Yeah. She was kind. She was working with her ex-husband and lovely. Their and daughter was on set yeah. watching them. And their chemistry oh, was right. wonderful the whole time. You can tell they're just, you know, Sasha. Sasha. really Sasha. figured out the co-parenting thing. Um, but also like she had to, they she would work she would then go sit in the corner wait be ready yeah. have her shoes on have yeah. her stuff ask for what she needs but also always be gracious and kind and I was like oh that's the kind of that's quiet grace America. I mm-hmm. need yeah. Yeah. Um, that the title that she won Miss America or was it Miss USA yes. I don't want Kenya Moore coming in studio oh, yeah. I don't have jumping time. on me I don't have time <laughs> no you gotta no, know I, the difference no true. she really makes it clear you Kenya does really well, can, I, Kenya Moore will, will check you in she a second she will <laughs> Vanessa Williams <laughs> no but Kenya yeah. Yeah. Vanessa is just classy yeah um, but what about you no, I like I forget that they are human too. Like I see them on camera and I'm like, oh my god, I'm nervous. I don't know what yeah. I'm gonna do. And then I meet them and they're just like awesome 
people and like big t- like no let me say it. Sean Anderson <laughs> <laughs> he was awesome I was so nervous and like he Girl, made me feel really too. yeah he made me feel really comfortable and he was so open to just like it was his first time acting and he was yeah. so open to learning and getting notes and it was like mad chill he was so cool so, so let's go back to the storyline because I feel like this obviously the story is so intersectional it shows yeah. queer queer women of color just women of color in general in such a beautiful light um, is that something when you first got this script and you were preparing for the audition is that something that jumped out to you is this was like oh I need to be a part of a project like this oh absolutely yeah. it jumped out to me because that's my whole real life you yeah. know um, I'm a person that's queer you know part of the lgbtq community and most of my friends are not um it really hasn't been until you know i become an adult and you know just meeting people and then they just so happen to be and we live in la so it's just oh, yes. easier to come across you know but i'm from the south and <laughs> well, I'm, in the south. I'm from south carolina oh, but, oh, uh, Nashville. Okay. Well, yeah, you're right there, there. Yeah. You're right there. <laughs> um and i went to college at you know chapel hill and my circle of friends is like 10 of us but all of them are straight you know women and that never changed the dynamic of our relationship you know what i'm saying and once i came out and stuff like that nobody was tripping about it you know yeah. It just it it so when I read the script I was like I love this because it doesn't it's not necessary it's not it's not like the L word you know what I'm saying it's not like all about that you right. know it's just this person who's living her life being confident and she just so happens to be queer yeah and her and that matters in storytelling it does mm-hmm. are matter. you gonna center it or is it going to is it going to reinforce the humanity right. of right. of me be, just being a person yeah. and not being exactly. a sliver yeah. of the pie? Exactly. Because for know. so many queer people, that's not the whole pie. Oh, yeah. 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 It's yeah. just exactly. a cute little sliver. Yeah. I mean, in the same yeah. way it is for straight people, which we've been telling stories on TV and on movies for straight people, yeah. where it's, their whole sexuality yeah. is not like the biggest point of their yeah. lives. Exactly. And yet so many things, it makes it to be the only point of a queer person's life yes, on screen. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, that's what I like that so much of this story is about Hattie living her life and who she sleeps with is just a single bit of it. Mm-hmm. She's just and out here trying to get living. a job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and boy, but here's the thing. I think with that type of mindset, it comes with people asking for representation, right? For yeah. sure. It comes yeah. with people saying, well, how do I see myself in these characters? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think about that as well? Because this is going to be, this is a groundbreaking show. And I mean, for gay cis gay men I feel like especially men of color Mm -hmm. we saw Noah's Ark Mm -hmm. and I see this for being for queer women of color Mm -hmm. and just showing friendships and how it's really bridging the gap between so many different communities Mm -hmm. yeah for sure I think that we gotta stop acting like it's so something so new. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like people people should just be given the allowance to be themselves and truly live in their own peace, you know? Um and that's what I hope they take. I, I used to watch uh, Noah's Ark yes. as well. <laughs> I used to sneak and watch it. Really? Yeah, I cause I mean my mother was I, not I having it. She was a very, watch it. She was a very Pentecostal church lady. Oh, wow. Okay, but you probably still had logo in the cable package. No, I did. I didn't have <laughs> I, the first my gay first representation was Degrassi Next Generation. Oh, Oh, and, and then yes. I went to college and I started st- staying in the dorm room and I started meeting other gay like queer men of color mm-hmm. and that's when they introduced me to yeah. who everyone says I am Alex yes. if oh. you are familiar with the Noah's oh, Arcade <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. and yeah. so yeah I mean but that show plays such a huge part which I mm-hmm. can only imagine this you know 20s is going to do the same thing for uh, just being 20s <laughs> right yeah I, mean, I, I 100% think representation you said like once you got to college you yeah. found you know a circle of friends that were also queer and I think that that's representation is so important in that regard because it is true you know i can't ask my straight friends for advice on certain things right. you know what i'm saying because they just have never had that experience yeah. whereas mm-hmm. you know if you got a homie that is the same sexuality as you y'all can talk about things and you know what's your tips you know what i'm saying or you know yeah. um and that's important you know what i'm saying is to have that that space to but also we got YouTube, you know what I'm saying? And when I was coming out, I sought out, you know, thank God for so many people who have uh, web series on, you know, YouTube focused on queer, you know, L- yeah. the LGBTQ community. Or um, I know like Amber's Closet. I used to yeah. watch her all the time How to see to Amber. learn life. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know. Um, and so that is why representation is important yeah. because, you know, otherwise you're just floundering in out here. So I wanted to piggyback off of Ryan's question and I wanted to ask just in general, how does it feel to kind of pioneer this lane 
at a network like BET. I've noticed that this year they've taken kind of an initiative to be a bit more inclusive. They had that hashtag, BET Queer AF, mm-hmm. yeah. where they were highlighting a different queer person of they color. They just missed us, though, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> next year. Yeah, that's next year. Next year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. But, but how does it feel to kind of, uh, and I guess this kind of ties into what we just finished kind of talking about, but I just wanted to elaborate on how it feels to hold down this space, kind of pioneering. This is the first scripted series that highlights someone where the main character is mm-hmm. queer and also a, a big screw up but, <laughs> but also wildly irresponsible right, right. Right. <laughs> those things don't synonymously but, go together yes. <laughs> but how does it feel to kind of be on the forefront of of this this wave do you hope that it kind of maybe opens more doors to kind of um highlight other stories how does that feel i know for me the show was at another network before it moved to BET. I mean, it was at plenty of networks before, but when we made the pilot, we made it for another network. And when it moved to BET, as a person who has not always bought into BET's content, like over the years, I found things that I loved and found things that I didn't. And um, But I was in a place where I was not finding a lot that I loved um, at that moment. And I was nervous, honestly yeah. and truly. I'm going to keep it real. Mm-hmm. And so I was like... I don't know how I feel about the show moving. And it wasn't like I had a choice. It was going here. (laughs) (laughs) My contract said it's coming coming with you. Truly. And I remember um, one of our producers, Andrew Coles, who's also a good friend of mine from college, when he called to tell me that it moved, and I was like, how do you feel? He was like, honestly, Tina, I'm excited. He's like, I'm excited that we get to make this show that we know is good, Mm. that we know is so important for representation, that we also just know is quality programming, Mm -hmm. and we get to make it for black people on a black network yeah and i didn't believe him at first but truly in the last year i have come to be so excited that the show's on bet to be so excited for us excited for all those who made it but mostly i'm really excited for this audience who will get to turn on their tv at 10 p.m and they will watch whatever other shows they love on the network and then i want those eyes to stay here and see see this story see this hattie this woman being the center of this story Mm -hmm. um and then call their friends and tell them to watch it too yeah, and yeah. not for ratings sake, but for we, we need to tell we need to see people who look like Hattie on TV all the time. And then we need to see other people who do and other people. Don't, I want BT to continue making shows <laughs> that are this meaningful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, that that has always been my goal as an artist is to make um, groundbreaking work and to yeah. be a trailblazer. And like Lena has been like such a, a leader in doing that. And to be able to be behind it is like overwhelming but such an (laughs) honor i'm so i'm so grateful and i didn't think it would happen so quickly but i'm like stupid grateful what did you each learn about yourselves from playing your character Hmm. because they're so different i mean they're also different but i also see similarities as seeing who you are right now because maria's uptight yeah i I coined you the uptight one maria (laughs) she did She's she's wound. She is wound. And then Nia Nia is a little bit more free spirited. Mm -hmm. I related to you the most, Mm -hmm. I think, just as far as like. I related to you. I'm more so the wound up one in my life. I I related to a mixture. Yeah. (laughs) With the the exception of Hattie. Hattie, You had me breaking out in hives with some of the decisions you were making. It's it's not a monolith. Showing up late. (laughs) But anyway, go ahead. What was the question, Ryan? What did you learn about yourselves through playing your characters? I don't know. Through the whole process of shooting, period, I learned that I was where I needed to be. You mm. know, um, this is the first job, and I've had plenty of miscellaneous jobs, you know, and of course, acting is why I came to LA. But once you finally doing it, I realized, like, I don't check the clock. I'm not worried about when it's time mm-hmm. to leave. Yeah. I just, from what I learned from the playing this character, was that you're where you're supposed to be. Um, and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing because you're happy doing it. Like, I would I would have played Hattie for free now let me know of course you know i'm trying to get paid <laughs> but <laughs> no crab legs for you you know what i'm saying because i need them crab legs <laughs> but um i would have done it low, high key <laughs> for free you know and that's that's a special type of job you yeah. know and that's a special type of blessing mm-hmm. um because i i've not i've not felt that way many times for every job in the past so yeah, I mean, every morning I just would come with so much gratitude for the fact that this, yeah, you know, it's an early day and you're going to be here for 12 to 15, you know, but 
I literally loved every second. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I love that. That's yeah. beautiful. What about you, Christina? I think Marie and I, we joke about how our characters are sort of exaggerated versions mm-hmm. of ourselves yeah. a bit. Um, and I think that's why we got to play them. <laughs> 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 um, but I feel sim- like Marie is uptight (laughs) and she's wound up tight and I think that I don't necessarily have that energy but I do have the idea of like I was really intentional about like I left high school and I knew what college I would go to and then I knew what I would study and then I knew I would go to graduate school for acting literally sisters right and then I would move to Los Angeles and I would start working and blah 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 and I got married when I wanted to and then I had a child and and I'm all about checking these sort of boxes but I also think like Marie that I'm not sure that the things I'm doing really always have sparked passion in me or like was I really did I really need to make these exact choices and if I did did I what did I not risk what did I not do that I might have loved to pursue but I was scared or I might have really wanted to like take more time before I did this thing or that or thing but I was scared because I did a lot of these a lot of the things I've done have been because I don't want to not I don't want to risk I don't want to fail so I wasn't going to just move right to L.A. after college because I wanted to get as much training as I could in theater school yeah. so that I wouldn't fail. And I took the first job I was given, um, not because I loved it or or hated it, just because I was like, it's a job and I'm going to take it. Right, right. Um, and so I think Marie is a lot like that. And I've learned from her because I hadn't really looked at the mirror for myself about that, about whether doing all these things has really brought me joy um mm, and so wow, i got to look in marie's mirror and be like it's not bringing her joy <laughs> let mm. me start making more decisions where i have to risk more where i have to like fail more um so wow, i'm grateful that for her chills. That's like, <laughs> that, i mean that resonates right i yeah. think Spark joy when people mm. watch marie these Kondo. characters they're going to see them they're going to be like well i need to re-examine who i am mm-hmm. while watching you all what about you gabrielle well i am just as much of a hot mess as Hattie is. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so we've been dragging you this entire time. <laughs> my bad, sis. No, it's no okay. you my are bad, not Hattie. Sis. And like no, a lot of these you're not Hattie. Is, is self-induced she because I'm Hattie-ish. so, yeah, I, I know. I'm a little Hattie like. She a little Hattie like. Now that I think about it. Nice. I look very calm and put together, but I am so like, just, a, just much like um, Hattie. And so I admire how like, I feel like a, a lot of the anxiety that I have is self-induced because I'm so disorganized and like chaotic. And so I love the spiritual soundness of Nia. Mm. And I want to just bask in that more. And um, I'm glad that I got to tap into that for the first season, but I felt like it went by so quickly and I just can't wait to be able to do it again. So I can get some of that, more of that energy, you know? I agree. I, I do feel like that it, it went by too quickly and that as far as character development yes. for you in particular. Because mm, yeah. mm-hmm. I feel like I know who Hattie and I know who Marie are. Yeah. But you, it's a mystery. there's still some development. Now mm-hmm. I have to ask, it is Women's History Month. Yes. Yes. Hello, shout out to the women in the room. Period. No shade, Ryan. I, no, I love black women. Come on. Okay, now. <laughs> I was raised by one, honey. Oh, she would hey, kick right. my okay, ass if I didn't say that. <laughs> so I have to ask, when is the first time that you felt that you saw yourself on screen? Okay, so the first time that I, because like you, like y'all, I was sneaking and watching stuff, you know, like Noah's Ark, and of course we saw Set It Off and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, once I saw She Hate Me that by Spike Lee, um, that was the first time that I was like, oh, okay. Because for a long time, I, I, I didn't think that I could be a lesbian because I just didn't think I would fit in. You know, I just mm, didn't think wow. that I fit in that box of lesbian. Oh, and I also didn't think that the women that I liked fit in that box. You know, mm. I was like, most of the girls I'm into are straight or, you know what I'm saying, and very feminine and da da da. And I've only seen one type of gay, you know. So once I saw, um, Spike Lee, She Hate Me with Kerry Washington, and um, I can't remember. She played Storm in one of the X-Men. But anyway, Mm -hmm. these two beautiful women of color who were in a committed relationship, both very successful, both, you know, they had, one of them had been with men before, but you know what I'm saying, still trying to figure things out, and now they were trying to have a baby together. It was, was, you know, a little extra in storyline in terms of that. But also, for me, it was the first time I was like, oh, there is... For mainly it was like there's somebody out there that I would want, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. who would want want me in return? You yeah, know, I think that's yeah. what some of my fear of 
like being with a woman was was that I wasn't gonna be able to find an adequate partner, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And once I saw that movie, I was like, oh, there it's are possible. It's possible, yeah. yeah. And it's possible to have kids, and it's possible to be married, and it's possible, mm -hmm. you know. So that's what I loved about that movie. It was the first time I saw possibility in a lifestyle that I was I didn't think would be there. Yeah. You know. Mine is cheesy, but Felicia Rashad in the Cosby <laughs> show, I was like, that's who I want to be. That's not <laughs> cheesy. That's a great choice. I mean, also, I wanted to be her as the character, but then also her as the actor, because she's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. She's yes. just, I mean, Grace. she's just, yeah, she's such charisma and light in every role she does, and then she's also just really studied and skilled and... I love her. You, um, <laughs> no, she's good. That's a good choice. Yeah, yeah that's right. We love Claire Huxtable. Love yes. her. Yeah. I think I really love the characters, or really resonate with the characters that that, that Zendaya plays. Like the oh. character in um, Spider-Man oh, and in yeah. Euphoria. Yes. Like I, really? Just, yeah, just with how... <sighs> the range. The ra no, but just just <laughs> in terms of <laughs> no, 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 for real, Mary Jane and Rue. Mary Jane, no, right. 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 for real. She, the range is completely <laughs> different. Just with how unstable the the characters are, and how like awkward and weird and quirky they are, and that's how I feel like all day, every day. Even though I'm like, I feel like I look very calm on the outside, but on the inside, I'm like, <laughs> just like. <laughs> And like I feel that's the when I saw it that's I related to her or those characters um, the most. Y'all have so much to do and we are so excited for Twenties. Thank it's you. going to be incredible. Twenties premieres Wednesday, March fourth, um, which today. is going to be airing two tonight. Day, well today. Tonight, yeah. tonight. tonight. Yeah. Yeah. tonight. Oh my god! Um, I'll be live tweeting. I'm even though excited. I've already seen the pilot, I'll be live tweeting. Me too. Okay, yeah. so quickly tell everyone where they can find you on social. Um, on Twitter at Tina Loren and on Instagram at Christina Elmore. <laughs> on Instagram at Graham Gabrielle. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Janika T Gibbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You sure? Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that Gibbs with two B's? <laughs> <laughs> My mind went left track. I just immediately oh. left for a second. Hold on. Janika, J O N I C A T G I B B A S. -A <laughs> and then I want to thank the obviously amazing Shar Jassel for joining. Oh, oh yes. Thank you for having me. You all, you know, you know where you can find me by this point. Shar mm -hmm. says so. Shar with an S. Some people still putting a C, and I'm missing your insults as you're, <laughs> as you're hurling them at me. So it's Char with an S says so. And I'm Ryan Mitchell from Let's Go There with Sheeran. Ryan, oh my God, it was amazing being surrounded yeah, by all so these awesome. awesome. yeah. so so Thank you. Right. Period.